Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick little story about this little plane here. This is a ZOHD Dart. Sadly, they don't make them anymore. I've had this one since about November 2017. This is still that exact same one. It is an awful lot of hot glue. There's been quite a lot of you who pour go into it. This one has been through lots and lots of different iterations. Those of you that have been watching my channel for a long time will recognize this little plane. Now, this was the one back in the day that I used to recommend to all of those pilots who used to come to me and go, Ooh, what should I get as my first wing slash plane? This was what I always recommended. It was cheap, cheerful, flew incredibly well, and came apart without any tools. It's all held together with magnets. So it's easy to break down into a backpack. So rather than things get broke, if you had a little bit of a <clears throat> hard landing, it would just snap together. And this one has been a loyal companion. I must have, I can't think of how many flight hours I've got on this. And it was getting to the point, sadly, where I'd done the last lot of upgrades to it, and it was starting to kind of look like this might have come to the end of the road. But luckily, it looks like it hasn't. And I thought it'd be a fun story to share with you because these things occasionally happen. The gods of radio control are quite vicious in that if you get a bit carried away, you get a bit careless, you forget to do something and check things properly, then they will absolutely give you a good hard dig in the ribs to remind you to not be an idiot. And very occasionally you get a little pat on the head. And that's what's happened with this. Now, as I mentioned, since November 2017, this little plane has been hundreds and hundreds of flights on it. It's like the plane that won't die or give up, which is why I put that in the thumbnail. Initially, it was set up with a ZOHD co-pilot, and then I put analog FPV in it, and it was absolutely fab. Then I upgraded it with a Runcam split and added Brain FPV Radix flight controller in it in early 2020. And then I replaced the Brain FPV flight controller with a Walksnell 1S board in about March 2023. Finally, that 1S board, I wasn't particularly happy with the performance on it. I get, get a, bit, a little bit of breakup with it. I had to use some kind of little adapter for 5 volts. I eventually, in autumn 2024, I upgraded it to be a full Walksnell unit in the nose. And that's using a Menace RC Aeropod underneath, and it flew great. However, it wasn't all good news. Back in the very early days, uh, these things are incredibly efficient little flyers. They're not very heavy at all. I could get about 18 to 20 minutes flight time without it breaking a sweat. And every time I added a little bit more technology to it, that flight time got lower and lower and lower. And in a re recent flight that I did, uh, it was only getting about nine minutes flight time out of the batteries that I've been using. Now I've been using the same batteries in this, these little zippy compact uh, 1300s actually, uh, for ages and ages and ages. And these batteries, some of them, are probably not that much younger than the actual plane itself. Uh, these are fine, they're really lightweight, uh, but the problem is is that after eight and a half minutes, it was really starting to sl suffer and slow down. You were losing throttle control, and after nine minutes, it was that thing where you kind of had to be on your glide for an approach because you wouldn't have enough kind of energy to kind of pull it out. And I was really heartbroken about that because in the latest incarnation, it now has Walksnail HD in the nose. It still breaks down and goes in a backpack. It still flies as beautifully as it always did. But I was only getting eight and a half minutes, eight minutes safely, rather than the 18 to 20 minutes that I used to get. And that's where I kind of left it over winter. I put it away and was a bit sad about the whole thing. However, this thing, because it's so incredibly efficient, doesn't pull an awful lot of current. So lithium ion batteries could be an option. There's quite a lot of room in front of the flight controller here. So I thought, well, let me see if I can get a 3S LiPo, a lithium ion pack in here, because if I can work out a way to not add too much weight into it and maybe position it right, maybe I'd have to kind of cut a slot because the, the actual battery hatch itself isn't particularly deep. I'll have a look and see how that happens. 
And amazingly, I figured out how to get back up to 18, 20 minutes of flight time with this without adding any more weight. The trick, of course, and a big thank you to a flying buddy of mine called Adam, who said, you have remembered to take the, he's got the big weights in the cheeks. Each side here at the front of the model, there are two very large metal fishing weights, basically, in these little pieces. And if you just cut, if you run an X-Acto blade along there and open these cheek pieces up, you can get in there and you can actually pull it out. Those things are pretty heavy. And then I started looking, is there a way that I could get the three lithium ion batteries in a flat pack rather than the classic pyramid, because that's too high. And I found these batteries here from GNB. These are GNB 3000 milliamp hour 10C packs, and these are made with high energy cells. So it should easily deliver the four to four and a half amps when it's flying around. Because the trick with lithium ion is the lower you can pull the current out, the longer they're going to give you flight time for. And I'm very pleased to say that these are great because it turns out that the weight of that battery plus the weight of those two fishing weights that I pulled out the nose are almost exactly the same weight as one of these new 3000 milliamp hour packs that can go straight in the nose. So I have bought myself two of these things. So these are now the batteries that I'm flying with this. And now rather than a 1300 milliamp hour pack, I have a 3000 milliamp hour pack and the plane weighs exactly the same. It actually balances on the CG marks. Everything is beautiful. So once again, the dart will continue to fly. It lives to fight again. And I'm just so pleased about that. I was actually sent, uh, somebody got in touch a long time ago because I always rave about these things. I still love them. And said, OHD, if you're watching this, please bring these things back. The 250 Dart for me is too small. The Dart XL is great, but it doesn't fit in a backpack. This is a beautiful size plane. Um, so... That's, I guess, not just ZOHD, anybody who is involved with wing design. Uh, if you are into that kind of 635 to 800 millimeters, this kind of wing design that comes apart, this 3 or 4S powered, it means it's easier to do with lithium iron technology, ideally comes apart toollessly to fit in a backpack. We need more of this kind of thing. These are fantastically fun things to fly. And now I have the ability to fly to, for 18, 20 minutes plus with the new battery. This is now going to be, again, one of the planes that's always in the rotation, along with things like the Atomar Sea Dolphin, Swordfish, and things like the Penguin too. So thank you to the gods of RC for giving me a little pat on the head and giving me a way to restore the flight time in this fantastic ZOHD Dart by using good old lithium iron packs. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payment 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.